All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, knock out this property. I did this uh, a couple years ago. I've got a, a video where I'm standing on top of the box of my old Chevy and uh, I was packing the leaves in. There's a ton of leaves on this one. Uh, it's not bad today though. I mean, it's, it's really pretty good. And it might be because we just did the neighbor's yard. It might be because a lot of these leaves and leaves from that tree fell on that yard. By the way, I got a call from that sign. Okay. Um, I've worked for this person before though. But it was uh, two years ago. Still had her in my system, ready to go. Uh, programmed in my phone, so I answered. I said, hey, said her name. That's impressive to people. So program people's names, put it in your phone and your, your system. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna clean this one up. It's not too bad up front, like I said. And we were just here, man, like two days ago. So I think I'm gonna do, I don't know. That's wild though. I didn't expect that, that much of a heavy drop. Let's go look at the backyard. So we've got some leaves down the side here that will blow out. That's pretty easy. Now when you're doing leaf removal, we got a choke point right here. And this is where they gotta come through, right? Uh, that's not too bad. We got some uh, some bigger sycamore leaves. Look at this bad boy. They're not dry yet. When these dry out, they're like, they'll crumble real easy. And they make a ton of dust. They drop a ton of sticks. Oh, yes. Yes, look at this. This job just got so much better. I thought we were going to have to blow it out that little gate. We can just pop this bad boy open. Maybe. Is there a lock on it? <laughs> no, I was just opening it the wrong way. <laughs> okay, that one comes back. Ooh. This one goes forward. So, go back. It goes back. I don't know what I was doing wrong there. But either way, we got an easy, easy end. I can actually pull the 61 in here and polish this up. But uh, there's not a whole lot of places to blow it, so... What we'll do is we'll get it all in a centralized location, tarp it, and uh, drag it up using the 61, and then from there vacuuming it all up. So this one's not too bad. Not too, not too bad at all. Let's go and knock this one out, man. This this one shouldn't be too long. I'm gonna guess um, two guys on this making it look clean. maybe maybe an hour and a half so i'd like to see it around an hour but we'll see i'm gonna go ahead and start a stopped stopwatch on my phone and we'll get rolling okay so i'm gonna set up these cameras real fast and then start a timer james is gassing up the blowers a lot of people ask me uh what i use to make videos and I use a tripod with the uh, GoPro Hero 8. Today I'm going to be shooting in 4K, but uh, that's not really needed. Most of my videos are in 1080p. You can pick up older GoPros for, you know, pretty cheap. Like $100 at a pawn shop cheap. So what I like to do is I'll get the camera and I want to look for the best view, right? I'm going to show you a camera looking into the camera. So we want the lighting. We want the lighting to be pretty good. I'm going to stick one back over in this corner and kind of give you kind of give you a shot over here. All right? And I'm going to stick the other one uh, probably in this other corner. Which may give us some sun glare, so I might have to put it somewhere else. I think I've got that camera pointing this way. Let's go ahead and put this over here. Maybe up on the porch. Press stopwatch. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. In 
today's video, I give to you what nobody knew they wanted, but you secretly desire. Oh my goodness, he's such a people pleaser. I just love his long video. Mmm, so long, so good. Yeah, well I think he's an idiot and I'm still not happy. What's up? Hey, I just got off of work. Uh, this was a couple weeks ago. Um, and we're cleaning up some leaves here. And I'm going to talk to you about how we're cleaning them up and what we're doing. So right here, I'm taking the ferris through. Watch right here. Because I, I ran over a rock border a little bit. I didn't see it was there. You know, for like a flower bed back there. So you got to be careful when you're taking your mower through leaves. Because you're going in completely blind. You don't know what's there. And you can really jack up your mower. Now just pay attention and be careful. And keep your deck high for the first pass. So what I like to do is generally, I'll, if I'm mulching up leaves, I'll keep it at transport height with my um, walk behind. You guys have seen those uh, if you've watched my channel for a while. With the walk behind, if I'm messing with leaves, the cool thing is if I hit something, it'll like almost force it to do a, a wheelie, so it'll pop it up. Um, right here, you know, I jumped off. There was a hose in the yard. If you hit the hose, guess what? You're going to be replacing a hose, and uh, some garden hoses. Are real expensive um, you know you might end up hitting a uh, 75 80 dollar hose that you have to replace so I'm not really worried about cleaning up leaves so much as I am you know just making space so that we can blow them around easier if that makes sense so since I had to pull my zero turn off I went ahead and did that and we're getting ready to come in and actually uh, use the blowers and start cleaning so right now I've worked my way onto the porch so I came in on the narrow side where that gate was narrow by the driveway and I'm starting to work around so the first thing I'm do is you want to start from top to bottom if you're gonna clean out the gutters start at the top blow the gutters off get the you know the roof line and the ridges cleaned off if you're gonna do that uh, if you're not, start with the porches or the top of the bushes and stuff like that. Because what's going to happen is you might clean the yard and then you go, Oh man, I missed the top of the bushes. Oh, I forgot to hit the top of that porch. Then you're making a mess where you've already cleaned. It just slows everything down. Now I'm using the uh, Echo 8010 backpack blower. That's uh, my go-to blower after trying that out. Um, I, I, it's no turning back for me okay it's just a very powerful blower I'm happy with it it does have some quirks okay it's quirks you know what I'm saying it's got some issues like um, every now and then it uh, it it takes a long time to warm up uh, especially in the summertime I've noticed like between lawn to lawn it'll take a long time to warm up sometimes and you know when you're in a hurry and you're trying to bust out a lot of lawns 30 seconds doesn't sound like much, but it feels like forever. You know what I mean? And it might be maybe even a minute. It feels like forever. Because in uh, in all honesty, on a lot of smaller properties, you can blow off all the concrete areas from grass clippings in about a minute or two. But here's the thing. When it comes to leaf cleanups and you're using it for hours at, on end, uh, in my opinion, out of all the blowers I've used, it can't be beat. So what have I used? Well, I've used a small pull and handheld blower. Uh, my first pack back blower was an Echo uh, 413. I bought it at a pawn shop. Uh, 580s. I've had the Echo 580s. Same thing. I bought them on Marketplace or at a pawn shop. It's a good way to buy them cheap. Uh, I've had the 770. Great blower. Same thing. Bought it at a pawn shop. It wasn't until I tried an Echo 8010 that my buddy owned that I decided I'm going to go buy my first backpack blower from a company you know from a dealership buy it brand new so that 8010 I bought brand new and I bought another one this year because uh, it's just it's if you're gonna do leaves or uh, even blowing grass clippings if you got a bunch of grass clippings on the lawn man this thing just really cuts down the time in comparison to any other blower I've used so I say that without any um, you know sponsorship or anything uh, if I have a piece of equipment that I like using I'll tell you guys uh, I'm not affiliated with any companies at this current time I don't I don't know if I'll ever do that down the road I have no idea it depends on what offers made and whether it's enticing enough or uh, whether it's a product that I'll actually be willing to back but uh, you know I mean <laughs> I, I use what I use because 
I'm I'm just like you guys. Um, so I mean, if you have a business, I'm just like you. I'm looking for what's going to make my job most efficient, but you know, doesn't break the bank either. So I mean, I know when I bought these eighty tens, like they, it felt like a lot when I first bought one. The second time, I was like, it's well worth it, no question about it. Um, but you know, I mean, there was a time period where, like, I couldn't. Man, I just struggled to get any piece of equipment. So if you're in that spot, just know that uh, it feels like hell and I, I know where you're at feels like hell while you're crawling out of it but once you're out of that spot once you get your your cash flow and your business straight and you get enough clientele built up man it just snowballs like crazy and uh, you know you're able to get more work and uh, word of mouth spreads around more you figure out advertising more and really once you get to a point where you're able to lock in enough jobs that you stay busy you can raise your prices and stay smaller which is kind of the method that I've done in the past. Um, or, you know, you can be competitive and you can grow. It's really up to you. The, the cool thing about business is, dude, you don't owe anybody anything. You can grow as big or as small, or, you know, grow as big or stay as small as you want. You're just, you know, I mean, it seems like a lot of people think you have to be huge. And, you know, I mean, I've gone through that phase where I wanted to be huge. And to be honest, I mean, the ego in life makes you want to grow a a massive company and um, you know I'm, I'm kinda I don't wanna say I'm a fly by the seat of my pants guy but man I uh, I don't know man I've never really I, I'll set goals so that I can meet them because I know it's very important but you know in the grand scheme I don't know man I didn't know what I wanted to do and that's how I ended up doing what I'm doing and I, it worked out good because I I like what I'm doing I enjoy it uh, so I wanted to show you that uh, walk behind blower over there again that's something that I wasn't able to afford in the past you know like this year it's crazy man um, if you guys if you guys are watching me and, and you're a brand new company starting out um, just know that you know only a few years ago I started in 2013 which sounds like a long time ago but it's really not uh, yeah, I don't know I guess we're we're, we're not too far away from that 10 year mark and still a ways though but um, you know uh, I started out with a, a push mower and um, there was a hand me down push mower and it was beat up and I spray painted it black and it didn't have a bag on it and a rake and a hand blower um, and uh, I had a, a Ryobi weed eater that I, I got from a neighbor anyways I, I don't want to get off uh, too far on that but the point is uh, I used to look at guys with a setup similar to mine or even less than mine you know maybe they just had a utility trailer uh, with a walk behind like when I first started there was a guy that had a walk behind his name was Greg Chisholm if you don't know if you haven't been around for a while and he had a walk behind mower um, it was a 36 inch and I was like man I wish I could have something like that and I just felt like I, I would never have something like that and it was really uh, it's pretty cool how the how your business will progress and progress quick um, so you know I want to throw that out there like if you're in that in that mindset just know that like I said it kind of feels like hell uh, but enjoy the growing part you know I've, I've come to realize that I enjoy where I'm at I enjoy while I'm growing I know that my business is ever evolving and uh, I could be creating a monster and don't even know it yet you know what I mean I mean I know what I'm doing <laughs> I'm not saying I know what I'm doing like I'm insanely pro but I, I I know the general direction I'm going at this point so uh, you know I, I've got I've got my plans and I'll explain that in another video as far as uh, as far as this job uh, this job you know oak tree gumball trees stuff like that the leaves were pretty dry so they're not hard to move um, and so two guys together when you're working tandem together you want to stay kind of in the same area because the blowers work better together than they do separate you know it's an awesome blower by itself but it's really awesome blower when you got two of them together and uh, so that parking lot blower up there is just running right now pointlessly by its lonesome not blowing anything but this was one of the first jobs I used that parking lot blower on since then I've really kind of uh, uh, I don't want to say I've perfected it but I have honed in on how to use that 
to be more beneficial and uh, you can push that thing around and use that backpack blower at the same time <whistles> that will move some leaves man um, really really liking that uh, you know I mean what you guys are gonna see too by the way when it comes to uh, the videos over the next few weeks I wanna let you know James is in Kansas right now currently with his new wife he's he's moved moved there and uh, he may come back for another week or two during December when the leaves are real real heavy but as far as uh, you know right now we're busy for Thanksgiving but he's up there spending time with his new family so I'm knocking leaves out solo you know I may hire somebody on I'm not a hundred percent sure what route I'm planning on taking with that I am leaning towards hiring uh, a couple guys next year for sure this year I'm kinda weighing out you know I don't want to wear a mask in the truck and all that stuff I'd rather work solo than be uncomfortable and even though working solo can be uncomfortable with doing leaf cleanups but my main point there is that as you see the videos over the next couple weeks um, because I am using multiple cameras and you know I, I do the voiceovers because my hopes with the voiceovers is that it'll help somebody but uh, you know because I do the voiceovers and multiple cameras the, the editing process can can get kind of extensive and take some time and we film multiple jobs per day because we're working more than one job per day and uh, so you'll see James for quite a while even though he's out of town so I know that kind of messes up with the timeline of the videos but to be honest with you man like I've got three terabytes of unedited footage ready to go so that I can keep shelling out content for you this winter I know that when I uh, used to watch YouTubers a lot, I, I always got kind of bummed when they didn't put out anything in the winter. And knowing that was coming up, I went ahead and got a hard drive and started filming as much as I could. Because a lot of the times, if, if you just film with, say, one camera, you can just set up the camera and move it around a few times. And you really only add about 10 or 15 minutes to a project. Uh, especially something like this with the um, leaf cleanup. You know, I can set the cameras up. I got two different angles going because the camera is set up in different locations and then um, you know I just move them around here and there to kind of keep the camera close to where we're working so that you can see what's going on so I you know on the internet you'll hear people you know a lot of guy, long guys will go uh, what, what do they say they say uh, if he's really working can how, how does he have enough time to do that my priorities are different than you when you're at home watching Netflix sitting on the couch scratching your little nuts well I'm working I come home and I work I either spend time with my family or I get to work man this is I, it's not playing around if you want to have se uh, success <laughs> if you want to have success in life um, with whatever you're doing whatever you put your time into you'll have success with it and if sitting on the couch watching watching Netflix is what you put your time into guess what you're gonna be successful at binge watching whatever show you're watching right now for my wife it's stranger things uh, <laughs> I'm not bashing my wife if you like watching movies there's nothing wrong with that I used to watch a lot of movies but I'm telling you now at this stage of my life you know I've I played around I'm a, I was a teenager um, I've gone through my 20s I'm figuring out how to how to uh, work and how to make money and I'm getting to an age where I'm like, well, you know, I need to make things happen real quick, um, you know, because I want to make sure my wife and daughter are always taken care of. And, you know, of course I want to spend time with them. So, you know, there's always that person that's like, well, you know, you got to spend time with your family. Yeah, I know. I don't neglect my family either. It's quite a lot to balance. But you can do it. You can do it. You know, I mean, there's work time and there's play time. And here's the thing it's not so much the quantity of what you're doing it doesn't matter if your work if you got a lot of quantity quantity or you're spending time with your wife and you got a lot of quantity it doesn't mean as much as quality so if you're just sitting in the room with your wife and you're not doing anything yeah it's kinda nice I like being around my wife too even if we're not doing anything but you know what I like more than just sitting in the room watching Netflix with my wife is having deep meaningful conversation with my wife you know stimulating conversation that pushes me forward or with my daughter actually playing with her like we have concrete floors I, I know this is off topic but we have concrete floors and you know I'll play with chalk on the floor with her um, or you know we 
we did a, a blue it looks like a blue epoxy but it's a, a blue paint what's up angel I'll be out in a minute all right so check it out uh, we we painted uh, the floors blue so it looks like a blue epoxy it doesn't it's not like a solid blue that would be ugly um, but you know we'll draw like lily pads on the floor with uh, chalk and we'll skip through the house like if it's on lily pads so I mean just having fun with with your child you know go out and jump on the trampoline um, go for a walk down the block just spend time talk to her when she interrupts your videos don't get mad say what's up angel you know be sweet be loving be kind your kids will remember your demeanor towards them it's important and the same thing with your wife um, <laughs> You know, I, I think I think it was in uh, the love languages. They talk about um, like a fuel tank for your for your marriage and and the relationship. And you know, you might think that you're going all out, but if that fuel tank's low, then you know things aren't doing well. You know, because here's the thing: I, I've always seen it like this. If you say you have one fight in your relationship, and this goes for anybody, not just marriage, but just a relationship of any kind. One fight will trump, that's not a play on Trump being in, in the political spectrum, okay? So stop getting, don't, oh, he said Trump, he said Trump, oh no, I'm unsubscribing, no. Trump, Trump's been a word, okay? It's a, it's a term, it's a term. Ten good times will not weigh up to one horrible aggressive fight or condescending comment you can have um, it doesn't even have to be something major you could you could have your wife say something to you or your girlfriend or your brother or somebody that you love or you want to have a relationship with of any kind if you dismiss what they're saying to you when they talk to you they will lose respect in you and that relationship won't last the same goes with your clients I would suggest that whenever you can and I mean whenever you can don't give yourself excuses to it that when somebody talks to you you give them your undivided attention and I know that at, at times you're incredibly busy and it's go 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 so it's very hard to um, shift because I know that like Okay, with business, we get very, very busy sometimes, and sometimes that puts us in a state of anxiety and panic, and we're in a rush-go mode, so it's very hard to speak with somebody for a minute. And some conversations you just have to cut short. If it's nonsense, cut it off. You don't have time for nonsense. It's okay. It's okay to cut something off. But if it's a conversation that is deep and meaningful and, and has, has its place and I mean weigh that out so that it makes makes sense but if it's a conversation somebody needs to have with you make sure that you spend the time to have it you know like recently I've been recognized a few times um, from the channel and it's it's a very odd feeling for me to have somebody walk up to me and uh, you know because I'm just a lawn dude I'm just like you guys I'm out working and um, you know to be to be recognized uh, for YouTube, it's a it's very odd to me. Uh, it's cool, it's flattering, it's it's awesome, and I mean it it feels good. And at the same time, like I said, I'm just like anybody else with the the lawn stuff. But when my point there is that when somebody comes up and talks to me, and they say, "Hey, I watch your channel, and it's helped out, or whatever it might be," I make sure that I am giving them the time that they deserve with me. If I'm busy, I'll cut 15, 20 minutes out of my life to have a, a uh, quality conversation with somebody. You, uh, you take time to watch my videos, and I appreciate it. And I mean that. I, I really do appreciate it. The thing is, when you, when you do take time to watch, that's my ultimate motivator, is that somebody's watching and that maybe they hear something that resonates with them, something that was beneficial to them that um, might help progress their life forward in a positive way. You know, that's a, a trickle-down effect. Um, you know, when I listen to audiobooks or 
um, you know, other YouTubers or whatever it might be. Well, you end up hearing little bits and pieces of things that I've, um, you know, paid attention to over the years. So, you know, like books. I've spent hundreds of dollars on Audible now listening to books while I'm working. Um, if not a couple thousand, I don't, I don't know. I don't pay attention anymore. Um, same thing. Podcasts. I don't really listen to too many podcasts. There's a few I listen to. Um, but, you know, live events. I've paid a lot of money to go to live events. I've uh, paid a lot of money for courses. And, I mean, it's important to educate yourself. You know, I, for a long time I was like, you know, I'm a long guy. I don't, need, I don't need school. I don't need education, whatever. But you can educate yourself in different ways. Don't ever stop educating yourself. Try to learn, progress, and make your life better. Just uh, apply that time learning to the things you want to you want to actually uh, learn about you know for me like I said I want to be a, a better husband I want to be um, better at business so I listen to those kind of things I want to be um, closer to God you know I mean so that's that's all stuff I listen to stuff that brings me close to the things I want to I want to achieve in my life you know what lines up with my goals and that's what resonates with me and what I apply myself to uh, and I talked about movies earlier, you know, I used to really like watching movies. I don't watch movies anymore because it doesn't line up with my ultimate goals. My wife's always trying to get me to watch a movie and I will cave and watch a movie because I know ultimately I want to have a good relationship with my wife. So if that's what she wants to do, I will watch a movie with her because sometimes it's just about being close. I, I value, like I said, stimulating conversation and, you know, sometimes... It's just as valuable to a person to be in the room with them. And you have to understand what their love language is or, you know, um, what they they need or desire. So, uh, you know, um, but I wanted to throw that out when it came to, like, books. And I was talking about, um, you know, having some kind of positive impact in somebody's life, you know. You know, um, you'll have little seeds of impact that really hits you um, re hit you hard in life and will resonate with you. You know, one of them for me was I like listening to a man. Um, it's Coach Burt is the author of the book. And, um, you know, ar around the time I found Coach Burt as an, as an author that I like listening to, it was when I was diving in with, you know, the Grant Cardones of the world and uh, Gary Vee. And, you know, with the Grant Cardone, you got the 10X thing and... Ah! And I, I tried it. I was doing it, right? And really, you can have that lifestyle, but um, what are you idolizing? You know, Are you idolizing something? For me, you know, I was idolizing this, um, somebody else's wants and desires and goals and everything else and not being honest with myself about what I truly wanted. And, um, you know, it was driving me nuts. Oh, man, this right here just frustrated me. I was like, quit, dude. Why did you just blow leaves back into this yard? I just cleaned like two or three times. You kept blowing leaves over there. So stop it. Anyways, so back to Coach Burt. Um, I'm pretty laid back, dude. I just, you know, you got, hey, hey, stop. <laughs> stop. I don't want to clean this all day. Stop blowing the neighbor's leaves over here. So anyways, uh, yeah, back to Coach Burt. You know, one of the things he, he would say is he, you know, um, he would trickle in little um verses out of the bible one of the one of the verses that he kept repeating in his book that actually made me um you know it planted the the seed that made me want to uh listen to the bible because here's the thing i think whether you're um religious or not whether you believe in in the lord or not or whatever it might be if you're looking for wisdom and truth and uh, you're looking to grow in your life i'm not saying the bible's for everybody I personally think that it will benefit you no matter what if you were to read it because there's so many um, little little hints of wisdom, right? So one of the verses was, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with handling a small amount, so now I'll give you many responsibilities. And so he kept talking about stuff like that. And, you know, my phone won't stop going off tonight. And so, uh, you know, he, he just kept talking about it. And he would say different verses like that. And to me, that really resonated with me on, you know, finding a larger purpose in life. So I kept hearing, you know, 
Look, here's the thing. Like that verse. Be, be faithful with a small amount, and you'll, you'll have more responsibilities put on you. We go out and we work, right? Say you're, say you're just starting your business. You go out and you work. If you are consistent and you are dedicated to it, you will grow. You will make more money. Your business will grow. Your life will get better around you. You may have stress and you may have headaches. But if you start working on it and figuring it out, and you'll have new responsibilities that show up, new problems that make those old ones seem petty. And so now when I look back at some of the stuff that I had happen to me when I started, I can't believe that it stressed me out because it's just so far behind me. But it's really cool because I'll talk to some, some different people, you know. Yeah, I have people reach out to me all the time and ask questions. And it just reminds me of a time when, when I was starting out. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not resting on my laurels and, you know, like, oh, look at me, look what I've done. Because the fact is I haven't made it in my eyes. I haven't, I, I'm not where I want to be. And I'm enjoying the growth. And I'm growing with you. You know, my equipment breaks down. Um, I have days that are frustrating. I have days where I don't make money. I have days where I make good money, just like you. At the end of the day, I go home to my wife and my child, and, you know, probably just like you. I'm going home. Take a shower after a hard day of work, and I fall asleep, tired, and I wake up, and I do it again. Rinse, wash, repeat, and I love it. I mean, it's just something that I really enjoy. But when I talk to somebody else that's kind of where I was, it's kind of... Uh, It'll, it'll take you back and you kind of reminisce a little bit and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that did happen. And, you know, it's it's kind of fun. It, it um, sometimes it'll bring bring back some, some memories and you're like, oh man, I'm that's why I suppressed that. That wasn't that fun at that time, you know. But looking back, you're like, Psh, I can't believe that was a big deal to me. It's so petty. You know, I mean, it's so often that uh, I look at something that I was struggling with just a couple years ago. And I was like, no way, man. Okay, so on this job, uh, I was going to get this Ferris and push it up. Like I said, we were just figuring out how to use that parking lot blower. You know what I should have been doing with it? Using my backpack blower with the parking lot blower, having it facing forward, and using that in tandem with James's blower, my blower, and the parking lot blower, and using it to push all that forward. Okay? We still got the job done pretty quick, but that's what I should have been doing. That thing is a monster. You know, we had it sitting there like a wind tunnel, and I thought, yeah, that's what we, you know. The guy I bought it from said that's how he kind of used it working solo. But if you walk behind that thing with your blower, I, I mean, it's a lot of work. That thing's got some force, and when it's pointing forward, it's pushing back. It's pushing a lot of air. So if you just have it sitting on uh, the grass, and you have that thing blowing in a, a forward position, it will blow the machine back. It's, it's cool to watch. Um... But that's what we should have been doing, because that's the way to really move some stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'll use a mower to push it forward. No. Nope. And the thing is, like, uh, normally you can use your mower like a plow, and that works pretty good. But the problem was they were so thick here that it was, like, lifting up my deck. So that didn't work. Um, the 36 works really good as a plow. I can drop it down to, it has notches, not, not, not cut heights. Like, I don't know what the actual you know two inches three inches two and a quarter it'll be one two three four five six I think it has seven notches in it and you move pins around so if I move it to a three that puts it close enough to the ground that I can just plow leaves with my 36 like crazy um, yeah now you're figuring it out Kevin now you're figuring it out use your, use your noggin man use your noggin you know, somebody's, somebody's been doing this longer than I have, which I've been doing leaf cleanups for a long time, okay? Um, I've heard somebody say recently in a podcast that they never they never did po uh, leaf removal, but they would go work with, like, FedEx or something um, during the winter. I never had that option. I, I never worked with uh, another large company like that. I did work with a uh, concrete contractor, and I, I would go do concrete during the fall and the winter, that is some hard work, man. That's some real hard work. But whatever I had to do to take care of my family. I went and built um, metal buildings one winter all over Oklahoma. Um, you know, um, Oklahoma City, we were down there building metal buildings for uh, 
power company. Um, we're, we were putting in substation um, metal buildings at the, uh, the substations like where there's transformers and all the power goes there and then it like puts it out all over town. It, you know, they got a bunch of transformers and stuff there. Really cool. Really cool. But I, I was working in the panhandle. Um, I can't even remember the town. I can tell you I never want to go back. <laughs> it was like, it was uh, negative... I can't remember what it was. It was like negative 16 or something, and I was out there all day, man. All day. And I went inside maybe two or three times. It was painful. My, my fingers were just locked up, you know. you know. I don't know if you're like I am, but I, I arth, arthritic type symptoms in your hands where, you know, the cold, it really, really hurts, and you can't move very easy. And we were out there trying to get this building done to meet their, their timeline and their deadline, and I like working for myself. <laughs> I like working for myself. So I I made it a point after that I was like, you know, never again. I'm I'm gonna work my business and I'm gonna make it happen and I'm gonna figure out marketing and I'm gonna make sure I don't slow down in the winter. So I take leaf season very serious. We really do a lot of work during leaf season. Um, and if you are starting out, if you wanna stay busy during leaf season, my biggest tip to you is take before and after pictures of every job put them on Facebook it will work um, you won't even have to put that many out on Facebook share that in a local local groups that you might be in in your area um, I've heard a lot of good stuff about like uh, next door app I've never used it but I've heard a lot of good stuff on it um, so I'd say that's pretty much the same as Facebook you know people are asking for hey who can do this kind of thing uh, I run Facebook video ads now but you don't have to do that just I mean, you could short little picture ads or video ads where you hold up your phone and you blow some leaves around and kill a sound, put a little song on it. I mean, nowadays you got you know like the TikTok style video, just make it like a TikTok style video, short, you know, 10, 15 seconds max with a little bit of sound and put it up there with your your name and your phone number with a cool song. And I guarantee you, people are gonna call. The signs that are in yards. That's how I got this job right here. Even though I've worked for this person, she probably forgot all about me. Now, I do email people that I've worked for in the past. I'm like, hey, if you need it, we're around. But, you know, I'm just throwing it out. Like, this person wasn't on my radar to email. I, I email the people from the previous year, not two years ago. So, uh, you know, she wasn't even on my radar. And I wasn't on her right radar. If it wasn't for that sign, she wouldn't have called me. You know, so I get, I get quite a bit of calls off those signs. Um... Door hangers are good. During leaf season, I love to knock on doors, although it's it's a very, very odd year. You know, nobody wants to be in person and face-to-face, and, -face, and it's understandable. You know, especially with the older generation, they are at risk with COVID, and I know that it has a low, uh, low uh, risk of uh, fatality, you know. There's strong survivability rates where I'm going there. But there there are older generations where they're at risk and I mean it could be it it could be um, detrimental to them so you need to understand that you know you got you got to understand that um, you knocking on the door is not gonna fly over with everybody right now so you know I wouldn't suggest doing that this year although if you need to work you can do it but like I said I just wouldn't suggest it it might not go good for you um, who knows? It might. I don't know. I don't want to tell you not to do something that you need to do. If you need to do it, do it. Uh, whatever you got to do to get work. Leave a flyer on the door. You'd definitely be all right doing that, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to throw it out there. I make a lot of jokes about COVID, but I take it serious, too. I, I respect other people's boundaries, and I make sure that, like, I, I'm not shaking hands unless somebody else offers to shake hands with me. Uh, you know, me personally, I'm not too worried about it myself, but at the same time, I would feel horrible if I brought it home to my wife. So I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's inflated. Yes, it's politicized. Yes, it's not what they're saying it is, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's really there. So, you know, I mean, boy, I got off sub. I just do that, don't I? Don't I? Don't I? I hope it goes in a good direction when I do. Look at this parking lot blower. Now this is an area where I had been comfortable with it before. Moving it back and forth on a yard. You can knock out a section like this pretty quick. I'm going to do a quick camera move. Look at that. 
setting up, making sure there's good lighting, no glares. You can do that, man. If you got a cell phone, you can make videos with your uh, cell phone. Put them up and get get a job for for leaf removal. You know, you can you can get work. You can stay busy. It's not hard to make your phone um, phone ring like crazy. Also, uh, once you have an EIN number, you can sign up and get your um, Google Maps listing for your business. Do that as soon as possible. Uh, start getting reviews. I I didn't do that for several years, and I took a big hit this year because my main source of uh, advertising has always been throwing out door hangers to get long clients in the spring, and that was not an option this year. I always stayed away from, uh, you know, because I got burnt with Craigslist with going all over town, so I quit. Man, look how windy it is just blowing back at me even with that big blower. Um, you know, I, I quit using online marketing that would put me all over town except for like leaf season if you I'll drive across town and go do a two or three hundred four hundred five hundred dollar cleanup whatever it might be I'll go do that I'll drive across town for that but for for mowing a lawn if you're mowing you know 35 to 50 bucks a pop and you're driving from one neighborhood to the next you're not making money you're not making money you need them as close as possible you know it, it it's not so bad when it's just you in a truck, but when it's you and another person in a truck or two other people in a truck, well, you really get into a position. You really get into a position where the labor starts adding up, the the non-billable time starts adding up. There's uh, there's profit margin in lawn care, but if you're looking at it and you're wanting to grow, you want to be able to hit numbers that if you're not in the truck there's still profit there you know and what what's scalable there you know you hear people talk about scalable you hear people talk about numbers I'm not a big numbers guy I would love to tell you and dive in deep I know some basics but you know a lot of my uh, stuff I, I looked at the real 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 simple real real basic but understanding now uh, the terminology some of it just um, you know it's been something that I've been learning over the last couple of years putting myself uh, into that position where you apply yourself more because I know if I want to grow my business guess what I gotta step up and I gotta learn some more stuff so don't be afraid to learn more don't be afraid to educate yourself don't be afraid to read books or listen to podcasts you know if you're if you're wanting to grow in any any way shape or form in your life and you're doing lawn business you know while we're working is a great time to utilize for educating yourself you know just because you're not getting a degree doesn't mean you can't educate yourself I'm not saying you know you can take a, a course to be a rocket scientist but you know you can listen to an audible book uh, if you can't afford audible you can find them on YouTube for free a lot of the times there will be somebody reading whatever audiobook that you're wanting to listen to so you can find it on there there are free audiobook um, apps that you can use. I like using Audible. I just feel like they, they read pretty smooth on there. And uh, a lot of good narrators. And For me, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Um, I end up buying, you can buy their coins and, or whatever it is, and then you get like three credits, and then you go buy your books. If it's under, if it's a book under like 11 bucks, I'll pay for it with, uh, pay for it outright, but if it's over that, then I use a credit, because you actually save it you know obviously the, the credits you pay three of them for like 30 something dollars it works out to like 11 dollars and something since the change right so if it's over that i mean just do the math don't use a credit on a four dollar book buy that thing with cash all right um and then use your your credits where they give you the highest impact um, if you're wanting some books to listen to let me let me grab this real quick Obviously, I'm going to tell you the Bible. I, I, I just think that was, uh, out of all the books I've listened to in the last several years, that's uh, obviously the biggest impact of my life. Uh, there's a lot of, like I said, even if you don't look at it from a spiritual aspect, there is a ton of just wisdom in there. You'll find that a lot of self-help books out there, pretty much all self-help books, are influenced um, in some way or another from... Um, religious teachings and most um, most often times you'll you'll find Christianity um, teachings in these self-help books 
and they'll trickle them out like, oh yeah, I came up with this. It's just something I thought about when I was 20 years old and I was in this hard moment in my life. No. <laughs> uh, I found myself in my 40s and uh, they, they, uh, I'm not trying to bash them. The, uh, the books always seem to feel that way. You know, there's always some story. Of course, I've got a story. Everybody's got a story. You know, and everybody loves to fall in love with their uh, their own story. I try not to. I try to use it so I can I can tell you where I was at, and hopefully, if you're in a similar position, it relates to you. But uh, don't fall in love with your um, your struggle story. Fall in love with your your story of growth and success, and and uh, where you want to be, and your um, your goals, and actually accomplishing key indicators on those goals. You know, fall in love with that. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to read some. So I mentioned the Bible. Um, anything Napoleon Hill's pretty good, you know. So uh, how to own your own mind, um, you know. Let's see here. Uh, if you're into religious stuff, John MacArthur is great. He's pretty advanced for um, somebody that's new. Like I'm... I'm uh, I would consider myself um, new when it comes to being a believer, and so the the terminology, the wording, um, I have to stop and I have to re-listen and I have to look stuff up sometimes. So that that can be, you know, very difficult to me. Uh, let's see here, uh, leadership stuff. You know, I listen to a lot of leadership. How to make myself a you know better in those ways. Uh, let's see. Here. Discover Your Why I didn't really like that one so much. And some of this stuff just gets boring to me because I've listened to a lot of books similar to it. Um, Gary Bishop, Unfook Yourself. Fook. That's how he spells it. Um, so, that guy's that guy's good. He's uh, got a... I, I think he's Irish. I'm not sure. Um, I thought that was very similar to um, Jordan Peterson and I would suggest Jordan Peterson over uh, Gary Bishop so Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life was a very very intense book for me to listen to and it's very interesting um, but also it was it was difficult because if you dive into um, if you dive into Jordan Peterson stuff Listen to it and be honest with yourself because he's he's speaking from a non-biased way, but a lot of people politicize him uh, But he's speaking from a non-biased way to try to benefit other people's life I would highly suggest you listening to uh, Jordan Peterson. You will really really enjoy that if you're trying to um, Progress your life and, and make yourself better. It's more of Focusing on yourself and what you can do about yourself to make your environment better. If you make your environment better, you can make your life better, and everybody around you, uh, around you, their life will get better. Uh, like I said, Coach Burt, I really, really like Coach Burt. Um, one of his books is "Everybody Needs a Life Coach." Um, personal interest. He's got um, uh, what is it? Zebra stripes or something? I, I don't know. His his books are good. As far as like, uh, they, they get me kind of excited. It's not for everybody, but I, I really liked it. One of the uh, books that I would highly suggest to anybody, especially if you're in a, a mindset that you need to pull yourself out of this trash mindset that you have. Um, maybe you're, you know, um, like the, the excuse mindset. Obviously, all these self-help books help pull you out of the excuse mindset. But um, success through a positive mental attitude attitude um, also a Napoleon Hill book very 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 good one of the best books I've ever read um, I would highly suggest it that will that will change your life apply apply the teachings and just be happy about everything and overwhelmingly you know whenever somebody says you're having a rough day just yes yeah, phenomenal day you just keep turn everything around make it make it a positive before too long, your whole life will start changing. Be a, be a positive person. It's very easy to think you're positive and then realize that you're like, <laughs> you're kind of a negative Nancy. Like, you're a little, me, 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 you know? So, I mean, sometimes people say I'm whining on here when I'm talking about my story. And I, I don't want that at all. I don't want people to think that. I, like I said, I'm trying to 
teach with it, but at the same time, like I don't want to hammer it home in that way. So part of it's articulation and then how it's going to land on somebody. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter. Maybe they're in a spot in their life where they hear it as a negative. I understand, you know, when you know, people talk about uh, people that support you and people that are haters. Well, I mean, they're in a spot in their life where whatever you're saying doesn't resonate with them right. It's my fault as well as theirs. I mean, they're in a negative spot in their life. That's the only reason they would say something negative about something I'm doing. Plus, I'm kind of a jack wagon sometimes. That's okay. I can admit that. Uh, let's see here. Jocko Williams, man. Leadership strategies and tactics. If you are wanting to be a better leader, Jocko Williams is good. Hey, look, if you are... This one, this one's great. This is not a... It, he doesn't have a book, but I'm going to tell you, I dove deep onto this guy, and um, it, it made my life much, much, much better when I was listening to his content. Um... I'll, I'll listen to certain people and just listen over and over and over to the point where, like, I'll fall asleep to it and it'll be, like, subliminal in my mind, too, you know? Especially YouTube. I'll fi find somebody that has just awesome information. But if you want to be uh, much better at sales, if you want to be much better at, um, you know, I talk about being ethical with your clients. A lot of people talk about that, like, you know, Grant Cardone talks about being ethical with your clients, but he's kind of got that sleazy sales thing going on. Um, there's a guy on YouTube, and he has a painting business, and I actually bought his course. He has an $800 course, and it's well worth it. Um, I'm, I don't have any affiliation with him or you know anything like that, but I will tell you it was well worth it. But just his free content was well worth it. You know, there's there's people that you'll find them, and they're genuine, and they give you a ton of information. Those are the people to dive into and hopefully make your life better, like I said. So this guy, his name is Eric Barstow with Painting Business Pro. And I know it's painting and, and this is a lawn care channel and maybe you're into lawn care. But the thing is, business is business is business and it applies, okay? It's across the board. Listen to roofers. Listen to, to uh, different types of contractors. This guy is smart, man, smart. He's like the lawn care millionaire of the painting business. But he talks about like sales skills to the point where it really helps guys on our level you know what I mean and when I say our level I mean my level or you know where we're a smaller company it really 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 helps and he he talks a lot about life balance as well so I would highly suggest him uh, I mean it I, I will yeah I'll just highly suggest that okay it'll be well worth di digging into uh, Grant Cardone 10x uh, 10x rule and um, you know seller be sold so I would highly suggest seller be sold I know I kind of bashed Grant Cardone a bit you know but it, it is good content you're gonna get hit by like a million and one sales pitch you know you're gonna have a sales pitch on every page of that book for his other content or for him himself and it's all you know but the information's there you're gonna get that with a lot of people they're selling something in the background and whatever it might be. All I'm selling to you is please subscribe to the channel and watch some more. I don't have anything to sell you at this point. I just want to see you be successful. I like seeing people be successful. It fuels me. It makes me happy. I want to hear your success stories. You know, um, in two years, I want to see a lot of people that saw some information from this year and they were able to start a business and they changed their life. And don't think that you have to be a big 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 business you can be a small business maybe you just need to make enough to to help pay your house payment or some uh, take some weight off your shoulders and maybe your business uh, that you work at won't give you overtime and you need some overtime money you just need some extra money man don't feel bad about that either okay but uh, Grant Cardone very good stuff there just uh, like I said you know when you're listening to people um, Listen to it with an open and learning mind, and then decipher what is a sales pitch and what's not. But listen to it with an open mind so that you can consume the good information that is going to be positive in your life. You're picking out and taking the best of everything that's there. Um, I didn't like the five second rule so much. I thought that was like very foo foo, but I, I like the concept. You know countdown from five and but it's just real foo-foo um 
if you get Audible and you want a lot of good content, but you don't have any money in the beginning, I didn't have any extra money to buy um, books. I would suggest um, getting the Harvard Business Reviews. Those are those are free, and there's some really really good stuff there. James Allen, that's that's good stuff. That's pretty deep and intense stuff. Radical Candor, that was a cool book. Um, you know, just talking about having uncomfortable conversations with people. You know, sometimes you got to do that, man. Mike Michalowicz, I think he's kind of corny, uh, but he has great information in his books. I would highly suggest those as well. I really like the uh, book Clockwork. Um, somebody, the way I found Mike Michalowicz is actually from uh, one of my viewers on here suggested and sent me the pumpkin plan. If you're still watching my videos, thank you, by the way. I really, um, really enjoyed that. He said, hey, man, it sounds like you're building a pumpkin plan. And then he sent me a link to it, and I got uh, the pumpkin plan and was listening to it. So it was a great book, great book. Um, but I really like Clockwork. It talks about, uh, you know, scaling. And, oh, the other one is, um, uh, man, I talk about it all the time. Uh, went blank. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. No negotiation system. That was kind of kind of an interesting book. First or last, profit first. That's the one I was thinking of with Mike McCowitz. Uh That's like he talks about ways to set up your bank accounts so that you can, uh, even if you don't know your numbers, you can kind of get your business in shape so that you're not suffocating. And that was uh, critical to me last year. You know, that's that's when we started seeing things start turn, turning around. Because um, we had cash flow, we were getting that down, but I would spend my money here or there and not really be able to pay attention to where it's going because I wasn't keeping up on it. And that's just the, the simple fact of it. You have to admit when you're, where you're having an issue or a failure. Note to self, if you're going to leave the mower on, or if you're going to have the camera on the mower, don't leave the mower on because it vibrates too much. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Gary V's got good stuff. Ooh. Um, this uh, Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. That was a good one. I, I enjoyed that as well. Um, Expert Secrets. That one was a cool one uh, with Russell Bronson. That's more of if you're wanting to start a YouTube and you're wanting to feel confident and having a voice and being able to talk about what you're talking about. That's a really good one. Mind hacking was a good one. You know, retraining your... Does anybody really want to listen to this? You want to just... I'm just going to name off the books I'm listening to. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Richest Man in Babylon. That book was uh, super influential to me. Uh, if you if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I went through this struggle where um, I jacked my credit up. Right when we moved to Tulsa, um, with the job change and the cost of living going up, and you know, kind of starting the business and not having money and figuring that stuff out. Well, so in the midst of all that going on, my credit was destroyed. And uh, since then, I've spent years building it back up, and it's finally in a really good spot. But, you know, this book, um, Richest Man in Babylon, was critical for me to uh, start looking at my finances different and start looking at, um, you know, like I had animosity towards the, uh, the lender. Like, it was their fault that I, you know was delinquent on my loan that I didn't uh, follow through that was my fault man thank you to the lender for for having uh, faith in me to give me that opportunity and even though uh, I failed I'm thankful and grateful that it happened at a young enough age that I can rebound and uh, repair it and learn and have uh, really good life lessons and it's helped shape me into who I am now you know because before I could just you know write my name and I get a, a signature loan for pretty much whatever I wanted and it was very very nice but you know I think it um, I don't know that I would be in business today if it would have came easy you know easy come easy go and it may not have been 
I'm using my mower as a as a rake right now. Why don't you use a rake? Because I've got a mower and I've got a blower and I've got the equipment you don't. You want to use your ten dollar rake? You go right ahead. But it's gonna take you all day and it's not gonna take me long at all. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean it. It just I I had a lot of benefit from reading that book and I would I would highly suggest it. Out of all the books in in there. Um, like I said, besides the Bible, Richest Man in ba Babylon is right up there as my favorite. Um, it's just remained one of my favorites, too. Let's see. Relentless was kind of a good book. Um, that's by Tim Grover. Uh, then I've got, I've got marketing books as well, like Building a Story Brand. Um, here's another one about culture in your business. Uh, change culture change the game that was an interesting book you know I mean there's there's a lot that you'll you'll find from these books just look for things that you want to learn about and uh, pick them out you know I've got some lawn care books here one uh, uh, lawn maintenance a beautiful growing a beautiful business um, the e-myth e-myth is a great book that's that's one that's almost like an essential for um, for listening to if you're going to be in business. Uh, Guerrilla Marketing is great, especially if you don't have any money for marketing. This is all talking about low budget marketing and, um, you know, methods that you can use. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, great book. I'm skipping over a lot of books that I didn't like, but that's all right. Uh, the Big Leap was pretty good. That's uh, Gay Henderson. That was a, a decent book. Uh, let's see here. We've got a lot of credit building books. <laughs> you learn about the things you want to grow in your life. Uh, Piranha Marketing was a really, really good book. Uh, Joe Polish and um, Tim Paulson. Very good book. Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, I've got different ones on copywriting and learning how to, you know, because, like, that's one thing. If you're going to write ads and you're going to grow your business, and I'll, what you'll find out is, as a small business, what you really need to learn is, like, how do you get the jobs? Well, if you present yourself with marketing, you can get the jobs real easy. Like I get people all the time saying, hey, why don't you wear uniforms? Why don't you have branding on your truck? And the reason why is because I'm doing YouTube. And I started getting a lot of calls, which I'm not opposed to having calls, okay? But I started getting a lot of nonsense calls. I am opposed to having people waste my time. Um, like I've said in the, in the previous part in the video, I'm all for giving somebody my time but if I get a lot of phone calls and I, I catch on that you're not a doer, I don't want to waste my time with people that aren't lined up the same way as I am in my life. Now, if you're somebody that you're a go-getter, you're a doer, you're, um, you're making things happen, I'm happy. I will be your cheerleader. I will talk to you. I will give you my information. I'll tell you all that I can. Uh, check this out. Okay, so the Billy Goat, I do want to let you guys know... Um, because like I said the timelines kind of jacked up I have fixed that that Billy Goat is running good now but it was plugging up you see how I disconnected it, it had this uh, don't do that okay don't do what <laughs> do as I say not as I do don't disconnect something like that you know and if you do make sure you have glasses just be, be safe you don't want a high impact something hitting you in the face okay um, but that hose is the same diameter as the exit hose on the machine so I assumed that since it's the same diameter as the pipe coming out of the machine it was going to be fine but I actually put a larger diameter hose on there and now it's flying through the other thing I think what was going on is that hose up top has a lot of ridges inside so it was slowing down airflow constricting that and then where it mounts to the truck it's got these metal uh, clips that hold it on they were um, you know it has to hit a, a lip before it goes inside it's not just straight out the hose and and out it has a resistance point where I think sticks and twigs and leaves were building up and then it would cause it to get clogged up so that is 100% user error the machine is running good and it is shredding good and it's shredding it super fine complete change on the uh, quality it was like night and day difference so I would highly uh, suggest that if you have a uh, Billy Goat or whatever 
don't use the same size diameter as that pipe and that I think that black O's is like a cheap pipe that's what I I got from uh, well that's what I had running for my uh, cyclone rake but it wasn't an issue on the cyclone rake on the cyclone rake it was uh, it was a larger diameter than what was actually coming out of it so you know one of the commenters uh, people that commented on one of my recent videos um, said it was like water the way water flows through pipes so you know if you have a three inch diameter pipe hose and you know with your water manifold in the system and you you uh, downsize it to a one inch pipe you got you know pressure issues so you know there's that you're not gonna have three inch uh, three inches worth of volume of water flow through a one inch pipe is what he was trying to say so that's a better way of explaining it it just causes a choke point so that like I said my bad and I understood that when I did it I knew that more than likely it came down to, to something I was doing user error and I I kinda had the same feeling that it was the hose up top because uh, one like you, you can kinda see the S curve anywhere you're causing you know um, um, choke points and turns and stuff really slow down the flow of air when I worked at the factory and I talked about working at a factory and stuff but when I worked at the factory I got to uh, build an air transfer unit where we would the machines would make parts and they would drop out of the machine and then I got to build it, it was like a highway up above the uh, you know up above the building on the rafters right and these these parts would come out of the machine fall into a hopper and there was a big blower like my leaf loader that would push it but it was an electric blower a uh, real big fan and it would push them through there and we would have to uh, cut the pipe and put it in and then we had pneumatic valves that would allow the pipe to go up and down and shoot the the parts into different directions man I just I've, I've really enjoyed being able to learn about different things in life whatever you're doing in life so maybe you don't have a business I try to tell people this a lot whatever you're doing try to learn the most that you can at the job you're at and make it enjoyable whenever I'm learning I'm happy I'm excited so like when I was at Sonic I worked my way all the way to the top of where I could be without being there for another 10 years you know when I was at the factory I worked my way all the way up to the top position I could get without being there for another 10 years or until somebody somebody were to pass away so you know that's something Wherever you're at, make the best of what you've got. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small we can sit together It's so beautiful You and me we meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free James and I are both dusted out. Uh, we got this one wrapped up. We 
got this one wrapped up it's looking good i'm going to show you it here in just a second now the box was half full and i mean it was like a quarter full so now it's now it really is about half full you know it tapers off and then as we're driving it settles down too so i'd say it's about it's about half full now check this out if you haven't used a leaf vacuum this is one big downside of a leaf vacuum although I don't really care about it this is a work truck man that's what i bought it for you know it's got rusted rocker panels rust on the fenders it gets washed like once maybe twice a year i should i should do that more but uh whatever let's take a quick look at this james has to dust off the concrete so you know it's inevitable there's always a very small amount of debris that you leave in the street and we're gonna dust that and kick it back to turf over there we got that looking real good but yeah the turf looks sharp there's a few leaves here and there like this one right oh, oh no oh no i got it i got it all right so coming down the side we got it all cleaned up now we gave the neighbors a courtesy on both sides we cleared off the driveway well on this side i cleared off the driveway on the other side i cleared off the section that was their yard it's just it's just common courtesy i'm blowing stuff onto their lawn anyways and on the other side it's one of my customers Oop, big stick now we've had get this gate shut here we have had a few leaves fall since we've been done pretty gumball tree i can't believe i've been saying that so much this year but they do look gorgeous this year so this one's a gumball and that one's a pecan tree so yeah there's that i didn't see a lot of pecan nuts but i know they're back here other than that man it looks really good back here mix of fescue and weeds i went ahead and blew off that roof the best i could from the ground might as well right um let's go ahead and do you a 360 again beautiful right came out looking really good we got pretty much all the leaves out so now we just close the gates talk to a client and i build a client and we're wrapped up and done that's the way it works everything is built off an hourly rate stopwatch said we were here for an hour let me pull it up you probably want to know how long does a yard like this take and if you know how long then well, you can kind of figure pricing right it took a little longer than normal i think because we're just figuring out um well one the, the bracket that holds our uh leaf vacuum was kind of messed up so we had to fix that and two we're still learning how to use we're still learning how to use that little wonder parking lot blower so anyways it took one hour and 48 minutes now they were a little damp it rained yesterday so they were a little damp and uh there's some nooks and crannies and some corners and beds all the way around on this one and we did clean up all the beds so it took a little longer than anticipated but that's okay look at this one just cleaned that one the other day man dang it that's all right what you gotta do during the season all right james is gonna dust off the concrete you know because inevitably you get some new drop we got a little bit on there and we want that to look good before we leave i'm walking around picking up sticks and talking to you but all that said we're out you have a good one